as the name indicates asic introduction to asic it's an application specific integrated circuit so this term is coined during the year 1980s previously if you see before 1980s all circuits whatever we are realizing it's been a monolithic ics we used to call it as monolithic ics so the ic which will function a specific for example all of us we would have studied uh, op amp linear linear integrated circuits right so 741 op amp so that op amp can uh, work as a differentiator integrator or it can uh, also act as an oscillator so 741 can be used for this applications and all for differentiator integrator like that. likewise in digital circuits a uh, gates logic gates again logic for each and every logic gates we are having a specific ics okay individual ics as things keeps on getting integrated when vlsi came microelectronics division came into existence now fpga came into picture so in fpga we can realize our xor gate or uh, whatever the logic gates we would like to realize our fpga can act according to the code right it, uh, that is uh, what you call uh, it it is not realized for only one application multitask uh, multitasking application can be performed in fpga it's a programmable asic maybe we can uh, coin that fpga to be like programmable asic whereas full custom asic when we come into full custom asic means we need to design all the uh, things in transistor level okay in transistor level we need to design each and every circuit and manually we need to draw the layout layout of that circuits we need to draw manually so it's a uh, much task is involved in full custom design and we can define our own uh, delay power everything whereas if you take for example 7404 this is the ic which we would have used in uh, our digital lab in our btech 7404 is an inverter ic uh, which has got six inverter it's a six uh, inverter uh, I, uh, inverters will be there in that ic and we would have uh, simulator verified that ic by giving logic 1 and logic 0 whether that uh, output is getting inverted or not but we wouldn't have estimator what is the delay of that inverter the moment when you fed the input to be 1 immediately at what time it reflects at the output whether a zero the delay and all we want look into it we would have just verified it whereas in full custom design you can design your own delay and the power requirements okay for an i'll show you the how an inverter can be realized by this time probably all of you would have been familiarized with the transistor level uh, schematic for inverter okay so there we will be sizing the uh, transistors n mos transistor and one p mos transistor and we will be uh, sizing our transistor uh, n mos transistor w by l means p mos should be 2 to 3 times of n mos transistor w because the mobility of holes is going to be lesser than the mobility of electrons so to match that uh, point mobility point we made the device aspect ratio to be 2 to 2 3 times that's how we would have designed and then we could have uh, we can opt t is equal to rc okay so mos transistor all in digital circuits mos transistor we will be uh, operating the mos transistor in the region of cut off and linear region we want to uh, operate our transistors in saturation region because in digital circuits it has to the mos has to act as a switch okay uh, at the cut off region means uh, no current is going to flow in linear region means whatever the input you are going to get it will be transmitted at the output in saturation region means in amplifier in analog circuits most of the circuits are realized in saturation region so uh, coming to the point now as a full custom design this as it come for a adc if you take analog to digital converter the first block is going to be sample and hold circuit okay for sampling one circuit will be there and then to compare with the reference voltage we need to uh, uh, transform the analog signal to the digital domain means first we need to sample it and then we need to compare with the reference voltage and then the digital circuit okay two set of functions is involved in adc 
Okay, uh, previously in the 80s, uh, before 1980s and all ADCs, they would have a separate IC sample and old amplifier one IC will be seeing, comparator one IC will be seeing, okay. And then all the digital, like that individually, now in ADC itself, one IC has came into picture. Now in today's era, we are using Bluetooth receiver, Zigbee receiver, everything. Now in a single IC itself, everything, all uh, applications are put into a single IC, okay. So that's how the, the term has been coined as ASIC, application specific integrated circuits, okay. So origin of it, the standard for initially used to be designed microelectronic circuits were gradually replaced with a combination of glue logic, custom ICs, dynamic random access memory and static, these are all the individual monolithic ICs, these are all replaced with a complete set of blocks in a single IC, that is how the origin has been evolved. And history of ASICs, maybe we can uh, refer about the history of ASICs uh, from the conference IEEE Custom Integrated Circuits Conference, okay, CACC, in short form CACC and uh, ASIC Conference, uh, International ASIC Conference. These two conferences, uh, there are more conferences also, but in these two conferences, the history of ASICs has been regularly updated. Okay, and then coming to the types of ASICs, generally ICs are made on wafer, okay, silicon or wafer and the circuits are built up with successive uh, mask layers. These mask layers are used for as an interconnect, okay, and uh, for uh, designing the transistors or the layout also. Everything we will be in layout, when we come into layout, we will be telling mask layer, the mask layers are classified into various uh, types, okay. So mask layers are used for doing the layout and then uh, uh, there are two types of ASICs, one is custom ASICs and programmable ASICs, okay. Programmable ASICs, uh, FPGA may come into programmable, fine and uh, this is the, this diagram shows you the so, a silicon chip or integrated uh, circuits is more properly called a die in the sense th in that wafer. So, in VLSA system design initially in CMOS processing steps, we would have studied that in got silicon uh, in got it will be sliced as a wafer and in the wafer, each uh, we will be slicing the wafer into a die size, minimum die size of uh, as far as 180 nanometer technology is concerned, the minimum die size is going to be. 1.525 mm by 1.525 mm, okay. So, this is the silicon die which is embedded in the package and then the package dies is come into uh, existence. And application specific uh, integrated circuits are generally classified as standard IC, ASS, PS and ASIC. And now, our uh, main task is uh, learning full custom ASIC, okay. So, ASIC is generally classified as programmable IC, semi-custom IC and custom IC, okay. So, programmable IC in the sense it comes under FPGA, we will be writing RTL codes and then whatever the functions we would want to realize it, we can realize it in this FPGA and in semi-custom IC, gate array and linear array, there are two types, here in semi-custom IC what we will, we will use some uh, customed uh, cells, the, the, what we call it as predefined uh, cells, already in the library it will be available and something which we can uh, design on our own, okay. So, gate we used to classify it as gate array ASICs and linear array ASICs and in custom IC, full custom IC and once full custom IC, once you have uh, uh, completed, maybe if it is a standard, we can make that full custom, for example, AND gate full custom uh, gate, uh, IC, you have uh, developed an AND gate like that means, maybe you can make it as a standard cell for that particular technology. If everything, uh, every point has been taken into care, uh, minimum delay, okay, that AND gate is going to achieve a minimum delay and uh, very minimum power. When you are designing an AND gate in a particular technology, if you are able to achieve a very minimum uh, delay and minimum power, we can make that particular AND gate to be a standard cells and that standard cells will be created as a uh, library in your process design kits, we used to call as PDKs, okay, in that it will be assigned and then we can uh, call it as a 
component in your just like uh, in Verilog, you will be calling it as a component in a structural modeling, no? And gate already it is available, we are using it for our reference. Similarly, here also we can make that uh, full custom ASIC into a standard IC also. Design methodology, as we discussed, there are full custom design, standard cell based design, uh, gate array based design and FPGA based design. In full custom design, this approach is extreme, uh, extremely slow and expensive, but it gives us a very high performance compared to because we are, as a designer, we are only going to design it to meet the uh, task, uh, whether we want to design the ASIC with low power consumption or minimum delay, everything lies on the designer's hand, okay. So, but it is a tedious task, it is a time consuming process. Whereas, uh, in standard uh, cell based design, in standard cell based design, some uh, IC is already built, uh, built in component or predefined cells. We We are going to use it, some part like full custom we are going to, so time uh, consuming is going to be somewhat lesser than the full custom design approach, okay. And then uh, in gate array based design, these are all uh, very fast and less expensive, but performance wise it is going to be very less. So on the uh, whole, in the research perspective if you see, yeah, generally in VLSI now ASIC based uh, papers will uh, get into publications very easily rather than FPGA based simulation, okay. So FPGA you will be just writing the code, dumping the code on FPGA and you will get some results. But practically process variation, those things and all you won't take it into effect on FPGA, whereas here in ASICs you have to take into the account a PVT corners, generally we used to call it as PVT corners, process, voltage and temperature variation. This PVT analysis in FPGA we won't be doing it. Whereas in ASIC, we will be doing it. So that gives you a very high performance. If temperature is varying or voltage is varying, means the circuit performance may get uh, change erroneously. Okay. So these are all uh, very uh, fast uh, designs, but performance-wise, it's not good. Okay, compared to ASIC, FPGA performance is not that much good. I have just tabulated again uh, the same uh, uh, thing only from the previous slide. So type of ASIC, full custom, semi-custom and programmable. So what are all the component, analog and digital? Mostly analog, RF, those things come into full custom design. Digital, some parts will come into uh, full custom design. And in semi-custom and the programmable, everything is going to be a digital uh, based design, okay? And then uh, how many, uh, whether custom logic cells in the sense, some customized logic cells we will be using in full custom. Here none, none of the cells are going to be custom logic cells. Nanometer.